Okay, hi everybody. Um, I'm going to do the homework for or the practice problems for Open Up Resources, Unit 1, Lesson 3, Reasoning to Find Area. The first problem says find the area of each shaded region and show your reasoning. So I see here in Figure A that it looks like a, a building or some stairs, but I'm going to split it up into three different rectangles. I'm going to split it up vertically, and then I'm going to split those into rectangles, and I know that this one is two by one, two, three, four, five. Two by five. So then two times five is going to equal ten units squared. And then this one is also two, but it's one, two, three, four units. So it's four units tall. So two times four equals eight units squared. And then this one is two by two. So then two times two equals four units squared. If I add all those up together, ten plus eight plus four, I get a total of 22 units squared for figure A. And I look at figure B, and I think to myself, all right, this looks like a square, but there are two other squares that are taken out of it that aren't included in the shaded area. So this, is, this whole square minus these two will give me my answer of how much the shade it is. So this one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is 6 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 again. So this is 6. Now these inner squares here are 2 by 2. This is 2 and that's 2. So if I take the area of the outer square, which is 6 times 6, which equals 36 units squared, and then I subtract these two. So I have 1 that's 2 times 2 and another one that's 2 times 2. That equals 4 and that equals 4 also, so a total of 8 that I'm subtracting away from the 36. So 36 minus 8 is going to give me 28 units squared for figure B. So that's going to be my answer for figure B. This is my answer for figure A. And then figure C, I look at this and I think to myself, oh, I've got a rectangle right here going across this way. And then this is, there's two triangles that are here. So I can split this up this way. If I take this triangle, I notice that it's 1, 2 by 1, 2, 3. And this one is the same, 1, 2 by 1, 2, 3. So I can take this triangle and I can flip it and put it on top of this one. So that that way, this now becomes another rectangle. So I have this rectangle and this rectangle here to find my area. This is 1, 2, 3 by 1, 2, so a 2 by 3. And then this rectangle is 1, 2 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units squared. So 2 by 6. So I'm going to add up my 2 times 3 rectangle plus my 2 times 6 rectangle. This one's going to give me 6 units squared, and this one's going to give me 12 units squared. 6 plus 12 gives me 18 units squared, and that's my answer for shape C. Okay, now the same kind of problems with number 2. We have A, B, C, and D, and I'm going to go about those the same way. So here I'm going to split this horizontally. So I've got these two squares. This one is 2 times 2 right here. And then this one is going to be, this whole thing is 6. But if I know this is 2, so this has to be 2, this leaves me with 4. So this side is 4, and this side is 4 over here. So I have a 4 by 6 rectangle here. So 4 by 6 is going to equal 24, and 2 times 2 is going to equal 4. So I add those up, and I get 28 units squared for figure A. Now figure B is similar to this one that we did up here, where there's an outer shape and an inner shape. We have to subtract the inner shape. So my outer shape is a 5 by 8 rectangle, and that's going to give me 40 units squared. And I'm going to subtract my inner rectangle away from that, which is 2 times 3, which is 6 units squared. I subtract those, and I wind up with 34 units squared for figure B. Figure C is the same thing. It's a big outer square, and I subtract a big inner square. That's one way I could do it. Another way I could do it is I could split it up into rectangles like this, and I would have 1, 2, three, four rectangles if I wanted to. I'm going to do it in the subtraction way because it just that's what I want to do with this problem here. So my big, my big rectangle is 15 by 10. 
So 15 times 10 equals 150 units squared. And then my inner one is 9 by 6. That's 9 times 6, which equals 54 units squared. I'm going to subtract those, and I'm left with 96 units squared. Okay. Now D is very similar to what we did up here with problem C, where we flipped this to bring it over here. These two triangles are congruent, so I can take this one and I can flip it over here and put it on top to make one big rectangle. That's 5 by 8 centimeters. Oh, and I just realized that in problem 2, these measurements are centimeters. They're not units, so this one should be centimeters squared. This one should also be centimeters squared. And then C is centimeters squared. And then D will be centimeters squared also. Okay, learning opportunity. All right, so 5 times 8 is going to equal 40. And then since that's a rectangle, it's centimeters squared or square centimeters. Both of those are the same. Okay, moving on to page 2. Two plots of land have very different shapes. Noah said that both plots of land have the same area. Do you agree with Noah and explain your reasoning? In these problems, just want to remind you that explaining your reasoning is probably the most important thing that you can do. It's going to help you understand it, and you're going to learn the math better, understand the concepts. We have plot A and plot B. And we can look and see that they line up. And we can assume they're drawn to scale so that they line up here and here. So the rectangles have the same width, um, excuse me, the same length, and they also have the same width when we look at them this way. The plot B has this triangle that has been put over there on this side, on the left side. If we were to take this triangle and bring it over here, we could say that it's the same size as this. In the lesson today, some of you uh, cut out the square or you slid it over this way or you traced it and you said, or you measured it and said that it was the same. In this case, it's the same. The triangle is the same size as what's missing here. So we wind up with two rectangles that are the same. Once we take this triangle and translate it over here, it fills in this gap. So what I would say is yes, because the triangle in figure B is the same size, I can slide it over to fill in the missing part. And that's going to convince me that the areas are going to be the same for both of them. All right, now number four has five parts, A, B, C, D, and E. A homeowner is deciding on the size of tiles to use to fully tile a rectangular wall in her bathroom that is 80 inches by 40 inches. The tiles are squares and come in three side lengths, 8 inches, 4 inches, and 2 inches. State if you agree with each statement about the tiles and explain your reasoning. Okay, so there's a bunch of information in here that's important. The wall is 80 inches by 40 inches, and then the tiles come in three side lengths, 8 inches, 4 inches, and 2 inches. So we need to keep that in mind. Okay. Now, first, for A, regardless of the size she chooses, she will need the same number of tiles, agree or disagree. Well, down here, I'm going to write A. I disagree with that. And the reason why is that each tile has a different area. She'll need m m more more of the smaller tiles for example the 8 inch tiles will cover about this much space if we say this is 8 by 8 the 4 inch tiles will cover half of that excuse me one quarter of that because it takes four one two three four to make up one of those this is four by four and then the 2 inch tiles are even smaller so this is two by two and the 2-inch tiles, we're going to need 16 of those to cover just one 8-inch eight, eight tile. So definitely not the same. B, 
B. Regardless of the size she chooses, the area of the wall that is being tiled is the same. Yes, I agree. Because the size of the wall never changes. Never changes. So the area stays the same. Or the area to be tiled stays the same. Okay. So C says she'll need two two-inch tiles to cover the same area as one four-inch tile. I disagree with that because if this is a four-by-four four tile, we split it up into two-inch tiles, she'll need one, two, three, four tiles to cover the same amount of space. So I disagree here. Now D says she will need four four-inch tiles to cover the same area as one eight-inch tile. I agree with that because of our previous statement. Um, this will work because of the previous picture. I can draw another one here to say that with an 8 inch tile, 8 by 8, I can split it up into a 4 inch tile, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I need 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 inch tiles. Split those in half to get that. And lastly for E, it says if she chooses the 8 inch tiles, she will need a quarter as many tiles as she would with 2 inch tiles. Well, if I look at the 8 inch tiles, and draw a picture here of the 8s, and 8, and this is 8. Now I can split that into 4, so I need 1, 2, 3, 4 times as many for that, and then I split it up again into 2s, and this is 1, 2, 3, 4 by 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's 16 2 inch tiles here to cover the same amount of space as one 8 inch tile. So she will, will need a quarter? No, that's four times less. And here it's 16 times less. So I disagree. She'll need 16 times more 2 inch tiles. Okay, there you go. I hope that was helpful. Again, that was Open Up Resources, Grade 6 Mathematics, Unit 1, Lesson 3, Reasoning to Find Area, the Answers to the Practice Problems. All right, have fun, keep learning, keep making mistakes.